Hey, hey and welcome to Gizmo's workshop. On today's workshop uh, I'm stuck in the shed, I'm stuck at home so I'm going to make a little project and the little project is a um, six second torch. So let's get into it eh? So, I excuse the mess in the workshop, but uh, this video is going to be about making my six second torch. Now, I made a prototype torch like this about three or four years ago, possibly even longer than that, and uh, it's pretty much made out of super capacitors, and uh, yeah, when it goes flat, it takes six seconds to recharge. And the reason I want to finish this project finally is because one, I'm stuck at home and I can't do anything, and the other is it's going to be really handy to have a six second torch well this video is going to be all about making a super capacitor torch a six second torch now it doesn't matter what configuration your torch may be whether it's a dolphin one whether it's like a mag light whatever it is when the torch doesn't work it's a real pain um, if it's got a flat battery it's got a flat battery you can't use it until it's charged up again that usually takes a fair while for a torch to charge up again well the torch i'm about to make out of this piece of old broken torch that i have here is going to take six seconds to charge up wow. it'll take six seconds to charge up and i'm going to use these which are kind of like a battery they're actually super capacitors and I had made a prototype before, that's why this is kind of a mess looking, but um, I'll pull it apart and I'll show you how it works. And just of recently, um, this is what's prompted me to make this video because I've just fixed my mag light torch up. It um, would forever not switch on. There was contacts inside that over the years had become loose and it just had power but just would never turn on. I replaced the bulb with an LED bulb thinking that would fix the problem but it was actually a loose connection from some brass strips. So the contents in that torch, this torch had like little strips of metal and they would touch one another and that would form the contact. The problem with that is it was not a solid connection it was a strip touching another strip and over the years I'd have to pull it apart and I'd have to sand those up a little bit get the contacts to be contactable again and then it would work again and uh, yeah it just became a frustrating issue where every time I wanted to use this torch it never worked I had to pull it apart I'd fix the contents up the next time I went to use it it wouldn't work I'd have to fix the contents up so what I did I really recently just rewired this one up with wires with no contacts it's just completely wired solidly to a switch I had to put a new switch in it um, for it to work but now it just switches on and off every time and it's a good torch now well it should be I painted it orange because blacks a bit hard to find in the dark so yeah I fixed one torch up and during that process I also had a few dolphin torches now they've got a big six volt battery in them every time I go to use one it's flat every single time for some reason every time I go to use my dolphin torch it would be flat and they're a bit hard to see that it's actually on and I think that's a problem half the time I'd leave them in the on state and they'd flatten by themselves so you have to really check that they're on but yeah it goes flat every time I go to use it it's flat I don't want that now I made a prototype torch years ago and it uses these super capacitors they are they're similar to a battery a normal capacitor when it gets charged up it discharges instantly a super capacitor similar to a battery when it charges up it takes a long time to discharge not as long as a battery does but long enough to make a usable torch and this is made up of um, 
Six supercapacitors rated at about 2.4 volts each, all joined in series. And I'll do a wiring diagram in a moment and I'll show you that, but they're all wired up in series. So I've got six of them all taped together, wired up in series, and they charge pretty much instantly. It takes, I count six seconds, just because I've called it a six second job, just to allow for them to charge instantly. But then they'll discharge and run for at least 15 or 20 minutes. So I've got a torch that'll last for 20 minutes. Now you may be wondering, well, a torch that just runs for 20 minutes or 15 minutes, that's not going to be much good. But if I want to do a task in the dark, say I want to look under my bonnet of my car and see something, and it's dark, and I've got a torch that I can grab that's going to be charged up, I can look under the car, find out what the problem is. If the torch is running for 15 minutes, that's pretty good. The thing is, with a normal torch and it's flat, I can't use it. With my six second torch, if I grab that and it's flat, what the idea is, I plug it into my cigarette lighter, count the six seconds, it's charged up, I can go underneath the bonnet, do my work for 15 minutes. If it happens to go flat again, I just walk around, plug it in the cigarette lighter, turn up at six again, she's ready to go again. So, yeah, you can see where that could be useful, and that's what I'm going to build today. What I used for my original prototype, I pulled apart one of those candle LED lights that you have at home. This is one that's all sort of pulled apart. It's not completely pulled apart, but I used this. They're 12 volts and they've got all the circuitry already done inside them to, for resistors for the LEDs and stuff. So they're a good system to use. This one's actually got three LEDs and for this torch that I've got now, I've gone one step further and I've pulled it apart even further just because I want to use the reflection of the, the dish that I have the torch and inside there you'll see this is the LED the three section LED that I'm going to be using out of one of those bulbs and it's just a three section LED rated at 12 volts and they're very very bright so that should make a good torch the thing is with this one in the torch it doesn't make full use of the reflective dish so the further I can get the LED down in this reflective dish I think the torch will work much better so I'm going to put this LED into this reflective dish right down in there like that and um, yeah hopefully that'll work much better like that so I'll do a quick mock-up of the wiring of this and show you how it's wired up and show you how simple it is it's just so simple it's not funny so here they are my six super capacitors wired in series they're 2.4 volts each six of them rate at 14.4 volts so that will easily um, charge up to 12 volts without overloading um, and I have a switch and an LED light in between that and the cigarette plug is used to charge it up. So I've already charged these super capacitors with my um, auxiliary battery that I've got there and how I do that is I actually made an extension lead with a cigarette lighter plug on both ends and that would plug into the little torch that I'd made and then I can plug that into my cigarette lighter in the car or on my battery counter six one two three four five six and then these capacitors are charged up and then the torch is ready to go and I'm going to try to just hold this together and show you the um, way that it's charged up I've put a little tiny miniature switch on there so I can switch the circuit on and off and I'll just connect up that LED and show you it powering the LED So there you go, that's the, uh, the circuit. Okay, what I'm going to do with this circuit is I've got a cigarette lighter adapter here. And my what I had before was I had to make this adapter up for that to plug into there and then that to plug into the car and charge it up. What my idea was with this torch is I went and got some uh, PVC tubing. Where is that? So I've got a length of PVC tubing. These uh, capacitors should fit snugly inside of that PVC tubing. So that will make up the body of my torch. And then I've got a little cap that just fits on the end. And what I'm going to do is, instead of having this end on there, I'm going to have 
inside the PVC tube, coiled up inside it, I will put this plug so I can pop the cap off, pull the cigarette light plug out, plug it into my car, charge the, car, charge the torch up, put it back in, and we have a torch ready to go. I have to work out what length I need to make this overall shaft of this thing to fit the capacitors and the head of the torch and that in there. Basically that's it. So this old torch, all the components for it, including the head, I'm going to cut this down and it, is, it should fit up into this PVC tubing nicely. I'll just glue that in there so that'll be the head of the torch and it'll be all complete. And I'll just work out what length it is. And then I think I'll spray it orange again and I have to fit that little tiny switch in one side of the PVC tube. That's pretty much all I have to do. So let's get on with it, hey? All right, I just went hunting through my gear and I found this plug with a nice flexible piece of wire on it because this wire on this plug is not very flexible. It's gonna be a lot harder to tuck up into that PVC tube whereas it's got a nice flexible piece of wire. So the first thing I gotta do is I've gotta snap off, snip off this, um, this cigarette lighter uh, female and change it out for a male. Don't need that. I'm now going to attach this to here. So I'll just be soldering everything together. <coughs> what I need to do with this, I need to work out which one of these wires is the positive wire. And there's a white stripe on one and there's nothing on the other. I'm assuming the white stripe is the positive, but I'm not going to take that for granted. I'm going to get another little thing that I've made. This is a continuity tester. And pretty much it tends tests a complete circuit. So if there's a complete circuit, um, by touching these two alligator clips together that, that little LED there just lights up so I can test a circuit I can test if this um, the one with the white stripe is the the earth yeah, we got it so you can see it whether it's the um, the earth or the tip. It's lighting up with the tip. It's also lighting up with the earth. So there's a fault inside this plug. So I'm glad I checked it because it shouldn't light up on both. I'll check the other one. The other one should be just the earth but if it lights up on both then I've got some problems so I'm glad I checked it before I just went ahead and used it. So that's on one, the other side is, that's the earth, the tip doesn't work, so the, the earth is working fine, the other way around though, the, um, the positive is earthing out on the earth somewhere, that's the positive which is the, the uh, one with the white stripe as I thought, so it works up, it lights up really bright, when I touch the earth, It was lighting up before. It's not doing it now. Um, I'm going to pull it apart and have a look just to make sure that there isn't a, um, a short in there somewhere. I'll do that and I'll get back to you.
All right, what I can see in this particular um, circuit, there is a resistor between the earth and the positive. I'm not sure what that's there for in this case, but I don't need it in my circuit, so I'm going to get rid of that. I don't need that little resistor there. That's what would have been causing the, um, the light to light up because it's connected to the positive and the negative for some strange reason I do not know. And I'll remove that from the circuit and we don't need that little resistor in there. This looks like some project I've done a while ago and I can't remember what that was for. <laughs> so, we put it back together now, separating the, uh, the negative and the positive. These are always fiddly little things. this together without it all coming apart. There we go. Alright, where's that screw? Nearly forgot the little rubber boot. Fixed up, let's check it again. So the positive was the white. Touch the positive, if you can see it there or not. There you go. Oh. No, that's not lighting up now on the negative. Positive is lighting up, not lighting up on the negative, so that's good. Positive. Not lighting up on the negative, so that's good. Swap it the other way around. Put it on the negative wire. If you want to see how to make a continu continuity circuit tester, they're pretty easy to make. It's just an LED and a 9 volt. Um, um, battery and a resistor to only allow the LED to get its correct voltage. Okay, negative's lighting up, positive's not lighting up, so that's right. So the negative is the black, the positive is the black with the white stripe. Well, that was a mission. Next thing we need to do is to solder those two wires onto those two wires. I've got some heat shrink, so I'll put a little bit of heat shrink on it before I do that.
This will just protect each wire from earthing out on each other when it goes together. That's all the heat shrink's for. Right, now we've got to solder those up. Okay, I've just switched the soldering iron on. I'm waiting for a few minutes for it to warm up. Okay, while the soldering iron's warming up, I'm going to um, attach this LED onto this reflective thing. And uh, I could glue it on, but I'm actually going to put a couple of little screws to hold it in place because if it ever breaks, I want to be able to replace it. So I'm just going to stick a couple of little holes in it so I can put a couple of little screws to hold it in place. Need to find some tiny weenie screws for that. That's why you never throw nothing away. It's always something handy. A little project. Okay, that should do it. it. Might be a bit bigger, might have to drill a bigger hole. We'll see. This case is plastic so I'm just do, doing it slowly so I don't crack it. You know what, that's staying there pretty strong with just two screws. I'll leave the last one out. So there it is. Okay, this solder iron should be hot now. Yes. Okay, this is the positive, this is the negative. So the negative is the all black wire.
Okay, so there we are, I'll just slip this heat shrink up. Okay, there we go, we've got the plug end done, all ready to go. Okay, time to put the head of this torch back together. This has a clear lens, I'll just clean that up a bit. I'm using my uh, cleaning rag, as you can see. So that goes in there. And this will go in on top of it. There it is, there's the head of the torch, all ready to go. That pretty much screws straight onto this. And it locks it in place. It's a bit rattly, so I might actually fix that with some hot glue. Just a little bit of hot glue in there. Just to hold it in place. Stop it rattling. Is with the hot glue it'll just hold that in place and stop it from rattling if I want to get it out later you can actually dig hot glue out pretty easily so we'll let that sit in there while that hot glue dries okay so what have we got now we've got the basic head of the torch made up with the LED in it we've got the torch body which I still need to cut off to a length We've got the supercapacitors and the plug ready to um, put inside the PVC tube. And we've got the PVC which I need to cut to length. So the next thing I guess is to figure out what length PVC tube I'm going to need. So we'll just piece all these pieces together. So I need that to fit in there. Be able to get this in there with the wires. It's about there. Now, how far up is that? I don't know. I'd do exactly the same thing. Here, I'll just squish it all up to about there. It needs to come to about there. That switch about there. The head, say roughly there. I'll cut it off about that long. How do you like that? That was um, very scientific. It's going to look similar to my mag light, a lot, lot lighter and a lot easier to use. So I'll cut this PVC tube to length. I think you'll find when you're cutting PVC with a hacksaw, you don't get a very nice straight cut. Here's a better way of doing it. So now I'm going to feed this up inside the tube. I'm going to just put a bit of uh, enamel gaps up inside the tube so that these supercapacitors don't wobble around inside the tube. I'll use no more gaps. I'm not going to use hot glue because hot glue tends to melt when it gets hot, even in the sunshine. So 
Uh, the enamel gaps won't melt and they'll stay solid in there once I poke them up through the hole. We also need to cut this um, down to size. There's various ways I could attach this onto the end of this uh, tube. I'm just going to use uh, no more gaps again, just to hold it on there. Okay, now to feed up the um, all the wires and that through this. Try and get that switch in place. It's going to be difficult. There we go. Somewhere I have the little nut, the little nut for that in amongst this mess. Switch. There we go. This is operational. No, I'm just going to put that bit of heat shrink over that positive wire. Check it. Okay, she's ready to put together and use. Let's test her out, eh? So there it is, that's a little project you can do. It's taken me, I guess, about three hours to make this. Um, a little super capacitor torch. I call it my six second torch. I pop the end off, plug that into the cigarette lighter, count to six, and she's charged up again, ready to go. Well, I reckon the next thing to do is to uh, give it a coat of paint. Let's do that, hey.
da vorne. Geht auf den. There it is. Six second torch. My back's starting to get a little bit sore now. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye.